Hi, today I want to talk about creating your first project using Verilog. Uh, we're going to be using the ISE design suite tools that come from Xilinx, the people who make our FPGA boards. To get started, we're going to go ahead and run the ISE tool. Uh, this is available in all of the software labs um, in the department. Uh, for some of these early labs, you can download something called the web pack from Xilinx for free. Uh, you probably have to register and give them all kinds of information. Um, but you can get it for free as a student. Um, when the window first comes up, it gives you a, a pretty complex looking view here. Um, maybe a little bit different, depending on if it's the first time it's been run on this machine or not. Um, we're going to go ahead and just go ahead and make a new project. So file, new project. And we're going to give it a name. It's really, really important that no file name here has a space in it. By default, it tries to create these in your home directory. If your home directory has a space in it, it's going to bomb later on, unfortunately, uh, not early. So let's go ahead and give it a name. I'll call this example. I've created mine in the Xilinx project directory with an underscore. Uh, CMP420, we can give it a name. Um, top level source type is HDL for hardware description language. Um, at this stage, it doesn't really matter what kind of uh, board we're going to be specifying in here um, because we're not really going to be putting it on hardware. But if you want to follow along for later, uh, we are using a Zinc family device. We are using the XC7Z020. Uh, the package is the CLG484. Speed grade is 3. We do want to make sure our synthesis tool says I, uh, XST. Our simulator is going to be iSim. Uh, we prefer Verilog. And that should be all that we really need at this stage. So it'll create an empty project. All this noise goes away. And what we see over here is the hierarchy window. Um, this is kind of like the project navigator. Um, we'll see where this can go between uh, implementation and simulation. Um, down here is going to be the process design uh, so we can kind of see what processes we can run um, and this will make more sense once we start creating our files. First step we're going to want to create a uh, Verilog module and to do this we just say new source. Um, we're going to go to Verilog module and make sure it's in the right directory and we'll just call this something simple. Um, this actually gives you a tool, a little wizard here, to create a new Verilog module. Um, this allows you to define the input and output ports. We can change these later on, so we could just hit next here and move forward. But um, we're going to make it real easy here and say something like we're going to have a clock as input, we're going to have X as input, we're going to have Y as output. We could actually make these... Um, um, be a bus so we can actually have it be multiple bits so we'll make a three bit output here and what we see is it gives us a, a nice comment block up here so for instance we can fill in our name and describe things um, and most importantly it gives us our time scale up here and it'll come in and create the basic module for us if we notice it's using the newer Verilog syntax, um, which we can actually further enhance by saying that these are both wires and this is a register that is three bits wide. And now we can just write some Verilog code. So for example, I can come in here and say always at pause edge clock begin and end and say if x is equal to one, y equals y plus one. So this would give us um, a kind of normal behavior. We can verify that um, this module is correct. So for example, I can come in here to uh, synthesize and we can check syntax. So under the process here, I can check the syntax and it will uh, run the syntax checker on it and show me the result. And down here in the console log, I see I have no errors, no warnings, no infos. So um, it compiles. 
this isn't really code that runs per se, um, we can simulate it. So if I go over here to simulation now, um, so up in here in the view, we can change from implementation over to simulation, and we see that the design processes here change. Um, in particular, what I want to do is create a test bench to actually test this out and be able to see how it runs. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make another new source, but I want to make sure I'm in simulation here. I don't want the simulation module to be added to the implementation. We'll find that later on that really conflicts with what we want to do. So we're going to go to new source and we're going to create a test fixture and we'll call this test underscore simple. Again, no spaces. Uh, choose simple as the module we want to test. And the Xilinx tools are really nice here. They actually um, figured out that we have a clock. Well, we have our input values that are going into the module. So we get our mod, the, the, the inputs to the module are registers, the outputs are wires. Um, it initializes them. It gives us a, kind of a starting point for waiting for everything to settle. I'm gonna just speed this up a little bit and make that 10. But for now, what I want to do is I want to go ahead and turn on the clock and make sure that Y doesn't change. So, for example, I can say here um, X equals 1. Sorry, X is still 0. And we're going to say um, after delay of 1, clock equals not clock. And after another delay, if uh, Y does not equal 0, that would be an error. Uh, y advanced with x equals 0. And that would be a finish. Um, after another delay, we can say um, x equals 1. And clock equals not clock. After another delay, if y still equals 0, error y didn't advance. So at this point, we have a really rudimentary test bench. When I saved the file, this display changed over here under the hierarchy. And what it showed is that test simple tests simple. And so it kind of rolls those up together. Really nice way of making sure that you have all of your Verilog modules covered by a test, um, which is just so important as you do a design. Um, at this stage, we can actually click on here, and I see that a process is iSim Simulator, and I can again check the syntax, make sure I don't have any syntax errors. I don't. So now I can go ahead and simulate the behavioral model. A new window appears, and what we see over here is the iSim Simulator which was launched by ISC. This is the Verilog simulator, or actually the HDL simulator that comes from Xilinx. Um, and the window is broken up into a number of different key parts. So on the left hand side here under instances and processes we see each of the different modules that have been instantiated in this design. So I can expand these to see um, our test bench, the device, the unit under test, the UUT, which is actually our simple module. And under there is an initial block, sorry, under the test simple is an initial block. I can expand this further and I can see that in the uh, unit under test, there's an always block. And what this allows you to do, if you pay attention over here into this column, we see that as I click on each of these different parts, each of the different parts has a number of different signals and I can see what their values are. Um, which is really, really handy because sometimes you may have made a, a mistake, a typo, you have something um, being created in a module but you didn't bring it out to the right wire or a name conflict prevented the value from showing up and so everything might be right in the logic, it's just that the wiring is wrong um, and we could be able to see that. So what I see here is uh, the current value. So this simulator ran, it didn't end, so it ran for 100, uh, or sorry, one microsecond, which is the default. Um, because I didn't have a finished statement at the end of my simulation. Um, if I had any output down here, um, it would show up. At this point, I don't have any output. 
Um, so neither of my displays ran, so it would appear that my module finished. And so, for example, if we wanted to go ahead and modify the code, um, I can actually go to my test bench and double click on it. And now iSIM will actually open up and show me the source code. And I can now add this finish block. So I can modify the code right here from within iSIM. And if I just go ahead and try to rerun this thing, and I look back, it doesn't actually change anything. And the reason why is that iSIM actually has to compile the Verilog code into an executable image. And it can be really quite a large task for a very large project. And so you have to manually redo that. Just restarting the simulation doesn't cause iSIM to recompile your code. So we have to click on relaunch. And after a second or two, uh, we'll see that we actually arrived at our finish statement. And now we can see that it finished in 14 picoseconds rather than running for the whole one microsecond. Now, the astute observer, um, we can see over here in the waveform window that all things aren't quite right. Um, our clock was all X's, the don't cares. And if you remember back to the Verilog discussion, uh, comparing things to do not cares is always true. Um, and that's why, or sorry, always false. And so that's why neither of our error checks actually detected an error but I'm not getting the right output. And in fact, we can see here, as I scan through here, this time scale is really zoomed in. So I'm gonna use the zoom tools and we're gonna zoom out a little bit until I can actually see it as a nice clock signal. And sure enough, there's our clock going up and down, there's X going up. Um, but our clock never started off at, at zero, it started off at all X's and so, that's the problem. We didn't initially give the value of the uh, counter to anything. So we can fix that up in our code. I can double click on the UUT and bring it up. And we can say something like initial begin y equals zero. And now under simulation, I can click on relaunch. And now this time we hit an error and we said that Y didn't advance. And if I look at the waveform, we can very quickly see why. X went up, but the clock never had a chance to give me another positive edge. I didn't uh, wait long enough. So we can adjust our, our test bench here. And one more relaunch ought to do it. Oh, except I have a typo. So somewhere in here I've got an error. And of course, there's the problem right there. Um, one of the things we have to see, pay attention to is the error syntax um, often will give us a clue. And if we don't really understand where the error is, first of all, we can click on these. These are hyperlinks. They'll take us to the line of the error. Most importantly is it'll give us an error number. So this is error colon HDL compiler colon 69. This is actually um, the error number for what's going on here. And very often we can do a Google search for these error codes and help us try to figure out what might be the error. Well, in this case, it's not clock one, it's just clock. So if I save that and now I can relaunch and with some confidence now, it should actually compile and run successfully. And sure enough, we got here to our finish. I expect when I look at the waveform that our clock is now sitting at final value of one, clock is one, X is one, and we can actually see where everything started. And we can even see here um, that this is the value changing right here. So this is really a nice window for being able to see these things. I can zoom in maybe a little bit more um, so we can actually see um, how these values change. And if you pay attention, these are the kind of uh, waveforms that um, are the stock and trade of communicating how the system is behaving over time. And in many cases, one of the things you're going to have to do is be able to provide a screenshot of these. One of the things we can say is file and print. Um, I can print this 
we can either print the whole time range or just a partial time range. Fit it to one page. And if you have a PDF printer, for instance, the Qt PDF Writer, which is a free piece of software, um, this will actually give you a PDF output of uh, what this wave looks like. Get the file. And so sure enough, there is the waveform. And so if we are asked on an assignment to provide a waveform, or maybe we're trying to communicate to somebody else, um, we can use this output to see how the wave looks 